In the early 1990s, two of my high school football teammates were shot and killed in a road rage incident in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I just became passionately interested in the gun violence problem. I believe the way we really solve problems permanently and deeply is through technological change. In a society that has a lot of violent crime, has a lot of public safety challenges, what's happening with all of the anger and pain around police force incidents, I think there's clarity of need to drive that change because gun control in the United States, the political movements have not made a significant impact and I wanted to take a different approach. What if we could make the bullet obsolete? I was at a dinner once and somebody asked me this question, what do you believe that nobody else believes? And my answer after thinking about it was, I believe we're approaching the end of war and the end of killing as an acceptable aspect of human society. Everybody looked at me like I had lost my mind. This is Rick Smith. He founded Axon and brought the taser device to market in 1993 as a firearm alternative. So the firearm is the primary defensive weapon because of its reliability. It is very effective at killing people. Now, one of the problems is the firearm is not only the tool of last resort, it's also the tool of first resort. And our vision long-term is we want that firearm to start collecting dust because we make non-lethal weapons that are so good, people don't have to resort to using the pistol. Today, the taser device is carried by 70% of police officers in the United States. But Rick would be the first to tell you that they're not perfect and they haven't replaced guns, not yet. For police officers, using force exists on this spectrum. It's called the use of force continuum and it helps guide their actions in the field. And most importantly, when they should use deadly force. So if you think of the use of force continuum, it is this relationship between the effectiveness of a weapon and its injury rate. If we plot this on a chart, we would say, well, down in the lower corner are those weapons that are low injury, but they're also not all that effective. Now we come up and we get into the next category where things are more effective, but they have higher injury rates, a baton strike or rubber bullets and beanbags. And then as we move up further, we get into lethal weapons. This relationship between injuries and effectiveness, it's not some law of nature. It's not immutable. We are changing it. We are creating weapons that are more effective and don't cause more injuries. We just got to keep doing that. I want to get to a world where the tool of first resort is not a gun. We're about halfway there, but we still have work to do. Our job's not done. The good news is we've figured out the hard part, and that is the electrical effect that can reliably stop anyone in a laboratory. Get on the ground, get on the ground! Turn around. Thick clothing or poorly spaced probes can make the taser weapon less effective, creating situations that put both civilians and officers in danger. It is not as reliable in the real world yet as a firearm. The thing we haven't figured out yet is how do we get that effect onto the target every single time through the clothing reliably. But effectiveness isn't the only concern people have about the taser weapon. Now, I'm not telling you taser energy weapons are, are risk-free. We've identified around 26 deaths where the taser clearly caused a death. There's a lot more nuance to this. The risk of the taser, the electricity actually getting into the heart and causing a sudden cardiac death is extremely low, like less than one in a million. And one thing we know, if electricity does cause cardiac arrest, it happens immediately. So I can't tell you that the risk is zero. It's, it's heartbreaking when we do see an incident where somebody dies. I mean, we got in to do this work to prevent that from happening. Out right now. A better taser energy weapon could stop killing, but it won't prevent misconduct. Information can only make us smarter. And that's why today, when we launch new technologies, we've created things like an artificial intelligence ethics board, or even more recently, we created a community advisory board with lots of representatives, particularly of communities of color, that are sharing with us what their concerns are about new police technology. And the body camera, I think, gives a sense of comfort that 
all right, there's going to be some oversight and it's not just one person's word against the other. If we understand those concerns, we can build in safeguards, we can address it through training, we can even change product features to make our devices harder to abuse or use in the wrong way. It's pretty obvious that a world where people kill each other is an ugly thing. It's a problem that's worth solving. We're still motivated by wanting the world to be better. This isn't just a, a wild dream. If I can see a pathway to get there, I think a world without the taser weapon is one that is far more dangerous than the one we live in. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, share it with a friend and check out freethink.com for stories of people moving the world.